Hey everybody, uh, we're back with another short little Stata tutorial using panel data. Uh, so following up our previous discussion using uh, that so-called uh, PSID data set, the panel study of income dynamics, um, we're going to look at how to estimate a panel data model using the uh, hausman taylor regression, which is a really cool combination of fixed effects, random effects, and instrumental variables, applying the right transformations, the right adjustments, just where they are needed uh, to give us, uh, again, a nice, uh, very flexible uh, specification. So let's start off here with our, our blank Stata window here, uh, and we're going to use that built-in Stata uh, uh, access to data sets, the web use command. Uh, and we're going to use that PSID extract. So we're going to go get some just example uh, panel data. Uh, and again, this is the panel study of income dynamics, just a small portion of it, uh, just for our example here. Uh, and we're going to, again, do a little wage determination model. Right? Uh, so first thing, uh, once again, we want to identify our panel dimensionality, right? Our identifier, so the ID is our individual uh, cross-sectional identifier, and then T is our time series identifier. So generally, you're going to want to start off with that TS set command, ID and T. So again, just telling Stata that uh, those are the, the identifiers, so it knows we're dealing with panel data, so we can use all of those XT prefix commands in Stata. Uh, and here we're going to do a little, uh, again, example wage determination model. Uh, so we might start off something like this using the regress command log wage, uh, and we might put on the right-hand side a, a gender control dummy variable, so female equal to one if the individual is female, zero otherwise, uh, the level of education in years of the individual, the number of weeks uh, worked per year, and then the number of years of uh, work experience. And so we would estimate the model, uh, and again here we've got uh, 4,000 over 4,000 observations, and as Stata catches up here, once we estimate this model, we'll get these uh, you know, semi-elasticities because we have that log transformation on wage. But before we do too much work interpreting those coefficients, we have to think, oh no, I forgot, I have panel data, so I have to take into account that time invariant error term, right? And if we suspect that that time invariant error is correlated with any of our right-hand side variables, uh, then all of these coefficients are going to be subject to some degree of bias, right? So again, from our previous discussions, we know how to handle that. We would apply our fixed effects estimator. Right? So if we call up that command again and use the xt prefix, so xt reg, comma fe at the end, this is going to eliminate that ai term through that demeaning transformation. Oh, no. Look what happened. Well, of course, our female dummy variable and our number of years of education are both time invariant. Right? You wouldn't necessarily think education is time invariant, but uh, these are individuals already in the labor force, so their level of education is already predetermined. So it's how many years of education have you already completed, and that doesn't change as you progress through time. So any time invariant error term, I'm sorry, any time invariant uh, variable is going to be eliminated through that uh, demeaning transformation. So what we need is a way to estimate those coefficients while simultaneously dealing with any potential correlation with the error term, with that time invariant error. So that's where this hausman taylor approach pays off. So let's just take a look at, at what this is going to do for us. Right? So what the model does is it again, allows us to treat different types of variables uh, in a different way. Instead of applying that demeaning transformation to every variable, we'll only apply it where it's needed. Right? So we have kind of four different categories of variables here, right? what we'll call x1, x2, z1, and z2. So the x1 category of variable is going to be a time varying, so it has the IT subscript, that is 
truly exogenous, right? So we're going to assume that it's uncorrelated both with the time invariant error, the so-called AI, and the idiosyncratic error. So we don't need to worry about any instrumental variables, and we also don't need to apply a fixed effects transformation. The X2 also varies by uh, time, so it's the IT subscript. We're going to assume no kind of traditional endogeneity, so no correlation with the uh, idiosyncratic UIT error, but is potentially correlated with the AI. So this would be a variable that would be uh, uh, where we would want to apply that fixed effects transformation. And then these other two categories, the Z1 and the Z2, well, note the absence of a T subscript. So these are going to be things like education or uh, gender dummy variable that are time invariant and may or may not be correlated with the AI term. So using the same uh, kind of notation, the Z1 is going to be uncorrelated with the AI and the UIT. The Z2 may be correlated with the AI. So this is going to be the real problematic component because we can't apply the fixed effects transformation because we would eliminate the variable because it's time invariant. So here's the genius of the model. Step number one, once we recognize that we have a time invariant error component, we know we have to deal with the autocorrelation, that cluster specific autocorrelation that results. So to do that, we apply the random effects transformation. Right? So that's the quasi demeaning transformation, right? The weighted demeaning transformation, where this so called lambda term is uh, estimated specifically to counteract that autocorrelation. Again, we're, we're skipping over all the theory here, so, so go look that up. We're just seeing how to apply this in Stata. So step number one, we apply random effects across the board. Then we have to deal with the correlation with that error term, the AI term. right? So the random effects doesn't do that. So the good news, if you want to put it that way, um, is that we can still estimate coefficients on the Z terms. right? The random effects allows for estimation of that so-called delta 1 and delta 2, because they're not uh, eliminated. Right? The bad news is we still have potential bias due to correlation with the AI term, even that transformed AI term, and our transformed variables in those X2 and Z2 categories, right? because of that potential correlation with the, the AI. So now we do a second step using an instrumental variables approach. So the hard part of, uh, of using an instrumental variables model, of course, is finding a suitable instrument. Right? So here we're instrumenting for these variables in this X2 IT category after we've done the uh, random effects transformation. So we need to find a variable that's uncorrelated with the AI and the UIT, so it's exogenous, but ideally highly correlated with the X2 variable. And the, the insight here of the Hausman-Taylor model is we have that variable right in front of us, right? That the demeaned version, what we're calling that X2IT umlaut, right? Following that fixed effects demeaning transformation. Well, that demeaning transformation eliminates correlation with the AI, right? Creates a new version of that variable that's, of course, going to be highly correlated with that random effects transformation. All right, so we're going to IV using that D mean transformation. That only leaves us with IV estimation for the Z2 variable. We can't do the same thing, right? Because the uh, D mean version of Z is going to again cancel out. Uh, it's going to be eliminated. So the trick here is we take those variables in the X1 category, right? which were by assumption uncorrelated with the AI and we take the individual level mean over time, call it our X1 bar, and use that as our IV for these Z2i time invariant errors. In our case, those uh, that education variable is gonna be a good, a good category there. So once we have this idea of, okay, what are the different types of variables? How are each one treated? Now it's just left up for us to decide which of our variables in our particular model fit into each category. So we might suspect, so with our log wage as our uh, our dependent variable, right? the x variables are the uh, work experience and weeks worked, uh, that we just have to think about, okay, which one 
uh, is potentially correlated with the AI, we might assume that uh, the level of uh, experience uh, is going to be uncorrelated with the uh, time invariant error component, but we could definitely imagine a case where the number of weeks worked is going to be uh, individual specific and have a, uh, a correlation with that AI. So something uh, about work ethic, something about some unobserved effect is going to make an individual more likely to have a higher wage and more likely to work more uh, more hours, more weeks uh, over time. So that could be a potential x2 variable. Then our z variables, the variables that are by their nature time invariant, uh, are the dummy variable uh, for gender and our education. And again, education might fall into that z2 category. That again, an individual might have just some internal unobserved effect that leads to higher wages and higher levels of previous educational attainment. Right? So that correlation with the AI needs to be dealt with. So once we have those categories, we just remind ourselves, okay, what are we going to be doing? It's going to be, again, random effects across the board. Every variable is going to be transformed with random effects. For the X1 and the Z1, that's all we're going to be doing. Right? For the X2 and the Z2, there's going to be our instrumental variable. So here the demeaned version of number of weeks worked is going to IV for the random effects transformed value. And then remember our X1 mean is going to be the IV for our Z2. So that's going to be played here by work experience IVing for education. Okay, so we got a lot going on. Luckily, again, if you know uh, know how to use the command, state is going to do all of this for us. So let's go ahead and jump back into Stata and use that uh, Hausman Taylor command. So it's again a a panel data specific command. So it's going to have the xt prefix. Uh, so xth Taylor, and then we just write it out as we normally would, right? Our deepen variable, we list out our right-hand side variables. So education, female, work experience, and weeks. Uh, and state is going to figure out which ones are the x's, which ones are the z's, right? So uh, it can determine which ones are time invariant and which ones are time varying. But we have to tell Stata where to apply that instrumental variables approach. So we have to list our endogenous variables, which in this case are going to be the education, the Z variable that's potentially correlated with the AI, uh, and then our labor supply, our weeks variable. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, our work experience, sorry, is EXP. Let's try that. There we go. So now, this data has uh, again, it's kind of separated our variables into these various categories. So our time varying TV exogenous variable, work experience, time varying endogenous, number of weeks, time invariant, our TI exogenous female dummy variable, TI endogenous education. So when you see this output, a lot went into it behind the scenes. Again, it's random effects. It's the fixed effects transformation to get the IVs to do instrumental variables. So now, if we made those choices correctly, we should now have unbiased, consistent estimation of each of these panel marginal effects. All right, so you'd want to put this kind of side by side with random effects without the IV. You could even do a Hausman test, like we covered before, to see if there is significant difference in those coefficients once we make the adjustment here. But again, from a purely practical standpoint, this is a great way to account for panel data bias uh, and still estimate our time invariant coefficients, which you can't do in a standard fixed effects approach. So, hope you found that helpful. Uh, put any questions you have in the comments, and I will see you next time. Thank you.